So today I want to talk about swags. And depending upon where you're from, you might already have uh, an idea in your head of what that means. Because of the title of this video, might get some views from Australia, and so I just want to address the Australians real quick. Everything you're going to hear here is going to be so repetitive and redundant to you. You're like, why the hell is this American making such a big deal about this? So I want to make a point here. There's no such thing as swags in the USA. And I don't mean we have something similar that we use or we use a different term for it. There is literally nothing. It's something that's totally alien here. There are a few people that probably know. I don't want to act like I'm the, the only person who's ever used one of these. This is a totally new thing. And that's why I wanted to make this video. Actually, uh, I think this is a rebadged Oztent Mitchell Discovery, I think is the brand. So if you want to see an American review one of those, then keep watching. Otherwise, this is all going to be old hat to you guys. You guys are the experts, so if you want to go in the comments and tell us what you guys think of swag, since you've actually used them for longer, please do, because I bet there's going to be a lot of American viewers going, why the hell would Australians be using this? This seems like such a bad idea for something so bulky that has such small size, but I've been using it. I know it's great. I like it. It's a great little sleep system. We just got to convince everybody else. Hi, I'm back. You probably overheard some of that, but uh, what we're talking about today is not the slang term millennials use for swag. This is an old term that Australians have been using for a type of sleep system that goes back over a hundred years, I believe. And because it's such an old sleep system, I kind of, I want to go into detail and show you why this is not just a small tent. So before I get into actually reviewing this particular tent, kind of like with the old video, I'm going to talk about swags in general, maybe give a little history and kind of what they're made for. And that might give you a better idea of why they are the way they are. So way back when, when people didn't go out and sleep in the outdoors for fun and it was just a way of life, uh, the old bedroll was the way that we would all sleep. If you don't know what a bedroll is, it's really simple. You lay out a couple blankets, wrap it around in either a piece of canvas or some oil skin to give it a little bit of waterproofness and then just roll the whole thing up, stick it wherever your, you know, your wagon train, your horse, and you'd go off into the wilderness. I don't know if maybe people that go camping and ride horses still have bedrolls on the back of the saddles. Sounds like a really fun way to go camping. But up in the US, we don't have bedrolls really anymore. But down in Australia, they kept using them. And as farmers would, transient farmers would go from farm to farm, making a wage and helping out seasonally where they're needed, these guys would use a bedroll and when they were done, they would put all their belongings in the bedroll, roll it up into a nice big bundle, just a giant jelly roll, put it on their back and head to the next place. These guys that would be traveling would be known as swag men usually. The rolls that they carried ended up being called swags. So now in the modern day, they're still being used on Australia, but even though they do still make some classic swags that are basically no more than an envelope of canvas with some bedding in it, most of them have kind of been upgraded. Nobody really wants canvas on their face while they're sleeping. So what they would do is put some aluminum hoops to keep it off you, put a little bug netting on there to keep the mozzies out, and you've got yourself a way to sleeping. A lot of you are probably watching saying, that's not a swag, that's just a bivy. We've already got those. This isn't a bivy. See, a bivy is a one-man tent where you took a tent stripped out all the extras to get it as small and light as possible whereas this is a bedroll where you added all kinds of features and stuff to it to make it bigger and a little more comfortable. This is a bedroll that's been improved upon instead of a tent that's had all the extras pulled out of it. And that's why I want to say this is kind of a new sleep system for up here in the US. Usually you know you've got your ground tents that everybody's familiar with. A lot of people do a lot of hammock camping there's the rooftop tents that's been really popular recently. We just never had these bedroll swags and they're really common in Australia. They haven't really caught on up here. I actually saw a website where a canvas manufacturer developed their own swag, but I think it's in no way comparable. I think it was just one of these things that evolved through a completely different process. So meanwhile, up here in the US, we don't have a lot of swags. The time I bought this, it was the only one. There was no other swags for sale in the entire USA. So just a quick update. I recorded this video over a year ago. It was about the same time my dad was going into the hospital, so it's been really hard for me to finish off the video. 
In the last year, 23.0 started shipping their swags to the US without charging the $250 markup they wanted to ship from Australia to the United States. So far, they're the only ones I've seen doing it, which gives us about four or five swag options now. I'm actually looking forward to buying one of their dome swags just to see if it'll work better when there's more legroom than this one that I've got. But one of the many new expedition style stores that I've seen open up still didn't even know what a swag was. So other than the fact there are more options out there, these still aren't really that well known. The rest of the video is pretty much the same, but there is more than just one option available now. There's, it looks like there's, they try to get them sold here and there and some places will import them, but there's not really any manufacturers putting them out here. There's no distributors. You can't find these at REI or anything like that, which is too bad because they're really great. And as much as I like this, I'd like to try out some of the other ones because of some shortfalls that this one has. Okay, now that we know what swags are and how they came about, why on earth would anybody want one? Now, kind of a hint that they're still pretty big in Australia is to do with the whole overlanding style of camping. They're not the best tents if you want to hang out in a tent. They're really just for getting from point A to point B. You set up tent real quick, you sleep, you wake up in the morning, roll everything back up and you're on your way again. And that's why I wanted one is, that's kind of what I was hoping for when I got a rooftop tent is I just like the idea of being able to get to a camp, unfold, be ready to sleep and camp for the night in just a few minutes, and then in the morning, fold it all back up and be on my way. Fortunately, there were some other drawbacks, like sometimes I don't want to pack up everything before I'm on my way, and that's why I really like these swags is it's that same benefit of having everything that's quick set up, quick tear down, but it's also the benefits of having a tent where you can leave it for a while or you can easily reposition it or you don't have to have it attached to your car. You can move it off into the trees. You don't want to carry it a long ways, but you can carry it a couple hundred feet away to a better vantage point or a more comfortable camping area. Or maybe you're just parked in an area where there's a lot of road dust, mud or whatever, and you want to get away from it all. So what's my actual review of a swag of somebody who's never seen them before, non-Australian, up here in the US trying them out? It's just a little too small. It's kind of, you get into it, there's kind of almost a claustrophobic feeling. And so you think, why would this guy be saying that he likes these when it's literally claustrophobic? It's, it's hard to put into words. I think the best, th best comparison I could kind of give to people who go camping is it's like getting in a mummy bag. That very first feeling when you zip it up and you realize you're kind of can't move around a whole lot it's starting to get a little hot and you try to undo the zipper but now it's stuck and you can't get out and you freak out for a second that was the feeling i first got when i got in the swag the flip side is when you go camping and the fire's burnt down to just embers and it's going out the cold and the dark starting to come in you get in the tent you slide into that mummy bag and it feels so warm and so comfortable and everything's right with the world and you zip it all the way up and you just bundle up and go to the warmest, most comfortable sleep you've ever had. It's the same thing with the swag. It's weird at first, but then once you're sleeping in it, it's fantastic sleeping. When you're awake in it, it's not so great. You're not meant to be in it when you're awake. You're meant to be in it when you're asleep. And when you're asleep, it's really nice. It's really not that claustrophobic. If you sleep spread eagle and you're waving your arms in the middle of the night, you're not going to get away with that in here but you can sleep on your side you can sleep on your back you can curl up in a ball on your side and you'll still be fine it's a little hard to get dressed in there it takes a contortionist to get some pants on but other than that sleeping is fantastic in there especially with the size it makes for a very cozy sleeping the very first time i used it was actually around here near zion where it was end of winter camping and the temperatures got down to almost freezing and I was really comfortable inside until I opened the door up, unzipped it and stuck my arm out and realized it was about 20 degrees colder outside than it was in the tent. So it's really good for just trapping in that heat. And then conversely during the summer it's actually not that hot because you can basically peel everything off, get down to just the bug netting and it's got really good ventilation, stays pretty cool. You don't want to be out in the bright sun in the middle of summer, but in the shade, it's really nice. 
um, even during the night, closing up all the canvas in case it rains. As long as you got the foot and the head areas opened, it's got good breeze through it. It's actually pretty comfortable in most temperatures. Also, I don't like reviewing something that I've only used for a, one or two times. There's so many reviews. This is kind of one of my gripes I had I mentioned with the rooftop tents is you hear people just raving about them. They're like, I've been using this for two weeks and it's the best. And I'm like, everything's the best when you've had it for two weeks. I wanted to put this through its paces. So like I say, I got it at the end of the year. I've been using it on every trip throughout the year. I've been doing a lot of trips, some of them pretty long. I spent a couple weeks going down the coast living out of that. and. So I've easily put, just from spring to fall, at least 30 nights slept in the tent. And I've had it in cold, I've had it in heat. When I was in Oregon, it rained so much that it was just coated in water. And when I was in the San Rafael Swell, it was blowing so much that any tent would have been rattling. And this thing slept in it and it was almost like there was no wind at all. It's so low to the ground and that just little dome shape, the wind isn't that strong at ground level and what wind does hit you just bounces right over it because it's just a little semicircle. It's like a little road bump on the ground. I've actually got kind of a negative attitude towards canvas. When I was a kid, my parents had a canvas tent that leaked like crazy. If it got wet, the rain would sheet down the outside, but if you touch the inside of it, it would wick straight through into the tent. So anything that touched the outside, sleeping bags, duffel bags, they would just bring water in. So we had to keep everything away from the side of the tent when it rained. So I've always stayed away from canvas tents. And it was one of the reasons I was kind of iffy about getting one of these, but I thought, you know, what the hell, it's the middle of the pandemic. I got to do something to stay occupied. Might as well try one of these out. And it was fantastic. When I was in Oregon and the rain was coming down, it was, it was foggy rain. It was just, the air was almost water. And it wasn't so much that it was raining, it was just precipitating out and just coming down everywhere. So it wasn't that torrential hurricane. Instead, it was just sneaking in everywhere and kind of getting all over. But once I was in the swag, I stayed dry inside, even with the head and tail of it open. But I had the top covered and I woke up and the outside was just beaded completely with water. And I put my hand on the inside, nothing came through. It stayed nice and dry, so for canvas, it's been really fantastic. I haven't got any complaints. I'm actually coming around. I'm, I might be a canvas tent person again, at least for when I don't have to worry about weight. And that's where this kind of gets into its problems. I mean, obviously you can see from looking at it, it's not a big tent. It's literally just a one man tent. It's the exact same size as a one man bivy. And when you roll it up, instead of getting into a little tiny bundle like a bivy, the thing's massive. It's bigger than most four-man tents that I've seen. But the trade-off is that, for one thing, it's heavy duty as hell. But it's just this bucket bottom, so you could set this out in a marshy, damp meadow up in the mountains. And the water's not going to come in unless you sink a good two or three inches into the ground. The canvas is heavy duty. The zippers are really tough. They're tougher than the rooftop tent I used to have. It's just really well built. It's very rugged and I really like that. I got a really small backpacking tent that it's, it's just tiny. I love how small it packs up to, but when it's unpacked, it feels like it's made out of toilet paper. And I don't like having to baby my camping gear. I like to be able to be rough with it and not worry about it failing on me. And this, you can do just about anything you want to it. I think you would have to go at it with box cutters before you'd actually damage it. So that's gonna add some bulk, but also it's a complete sleeping system. It's not just your tent, it's also your sleeping bag, your pad, and your pillow. So you have to think of what all those separate things would be. This is all one of them in a, just a big giant jelly roll. But that means you're not gonna be backpacking with this. And like I say, you can haul it a little bit. It's not that heavy, I've carried coolers a quarter mile from the parking lot to a nice camp area but it's not something you want to do it's definitely a car camping thing you're going to want to be driving it from place to place or alternatively it could be atv camping utv you can put this thing on a boat or best of all all of them at once drive to some place you unload your utv from the back maybe you got there late you sleep at the parking area then the next day roll everything back up strap it to the back of the UTV, take it another 50 miles up into the mountains, unload everything, set camp up there, and then come back the next day. 
it's really versatile that way, whereas having the rooftop tent meant I was always tied to the truck. This gives me so much more flexibility to move around, to sleep wherever I want, however I want. I'm really big on having a well-built, well-planned campsite. So having this, being able to move it wherever I want, get it behind a windbreak, maybe move it out of the way where people can't see me, get a little bit of privacy, is so much nicer than having to park wherever the truck was that usually is within the dusty road zone where you end up choking on dust all night long from everybody else heading up the mountain. Another drawback is that it is definitely a one-man tent. They do make two-man swags, but from what I can gather from people in Australia using those, it's not so much two-man, it's maybe two very cozy people or more likely an adult and one of their children that goes up camping with them. They're not made for a lot of people, so if you've got a big family you're taking camping with you, this is probably not a good idea. If you've got a lot of room as a couple, maybe taking two of them. So that pretty much limits you to individuals that are going out camping on their own, or if you go camping with a group, if you go off-roading with people, if you meet up and everybody brings up their ATVs and a bunch of individuals head up in the mountains together, that's when this thing really shines. And I know there's a lot of overlanding people that are in that kind of realm, and this is exactly what I think you should check out. It's so perfect for when you go camping and you want to be able to set up quick and tear down quick in the morning, but also maybe you just want to take a nap during the middle of the day, or maybe you've got a different camp every night except for two nights you're going to be in one place and you don't want to have to tear down your tent then. It's just it's so much more versatile than it was with the rooftop tent. I don't know if I would have kept the swag if I hadn't got the cot. I actually tried it out with uh, one of my parents' cots to see if it worked and it was so much nicer. This is just a Coleman quick setup cot. And it is, it totally changes sleeping on the, the swag. For one thing, I think because your butt kind of sinks down in the middle a little bit more than when you're on the ground, it makes it so that there's just enough room at the mid space for me to be able to bring my knees up to my chest without hitting the roof of the swag. And honestly, check this out. Just like that. The problem with cots is they're all slightly different sizes and all swags are slightly different sizes. You know, some of the Australian ones are made to be put on cots and they come with their own cot but you have to really be careful to get the right size because as somebody pointed out to me, you wanna make sure that the swag goes over the edges of the cot. Otherwise, when it rains, all the water is gonna get channeled down to the cot and then run underneath, which even though it's got the plastic bottom, I would rather not have a puddle forming under me while I'm sleeping. But setting up that cot only takes about one extra minute and it gets you up off the ground so that way you can sleep on any type of surface. Less worries about any ants or bugs crawling up onto you. And like I say, I think the biggest benefit is just that when it's on the cot, I have more room inside to get dressed and undressed. Not that it's still very easy, it's still pretty much a contortion act, but it is better than when it's on the ground. And as for sleeping, when it's sleeping on the cot, it is light years better than pretty much all the sleeping I've been doing in the last couple decades. When you have a ground tent, you're sleeping on the ground, which can be good and bad. If you're sleeping on sand, it's fantastic. If you're sleeping on a rock, it's not so good. And then with the rooftop tent, a lot of people don't realize that when you got a rooftop tent, you're sleeping on a hard, flat surface 24 7 there is no alternative it's what it is it's a big sheet of metal that you're sleeping on but this it's two inch thick cushion on a cot it's pretty nice i don't need any other cushioning when i'm on the cot overall i think a swag is the ideal sleeping setup for vehicle camping if you're by yourself all my camp gear is already compartmentalized into easily loaded bins and the swag works as a bedroom sleeping bin Anytime I want to sleep, I can roll it out quick like with a rooftop tent, but with the added flexibility to reposition it or to leave it for the day. But because it only works when solo and with a vehicle, its use is very niche. 
If you also camp with others or backpack, you'll need another tent for that. But for only $300, you can buy a few specialized tents and still come under a thousand bucks.